Hey y'all, welcome to Religion Wink TV. We're sipping all the tea with no shade, talking everything up to Yahweh. In about a moment or so, we're going to meet a well-known pastor and his wife, John Gray and Avantar Gray. But first... John and Avantar Gray just became senior pastors at Relentless Church from um, Pastor Ron Carpenter. And you will hear um, Pastor John Gray say that his first sermon is basically a confessional and an I am sorry for cheating on you allegedly, having a baby outside of our marriage kind of deal. If you haven't heard, there was a car bought for about $200,000 and it was basically a gift from John to his wife to say I'm sorry. Now what you're going to hear in this video is a whole bunch of Christian rhetoric for um, John to use the Bible as an excuse to cheat and you know to just get away with it, kind of make people feel sorry for him. Um, you know, you're going to hear some things that proves that he wasn't where he needed to be or should be as a child of God and possibly a senior pastor. One thing I know, if you can't keep your own penis in your own pants, how can you govern a, a, a flock of God's people and get them to, to submit to his will if you have a hard time submitting to the will of God yourself? So guys, stay tuned. Watch this video. Let me know what your thoughts are. Subscribe, like, and share if you haven't already did. And God bless you and have a great day. Thank you. Bye. The words of Apostle Paul. Remembering his B.C. days. Does anybody remember their B.C. days? Last week, hands were laid on Pastor Aventer and I. And even though the man of God, Apostle Ron Carpenter, and his wife, Pastor Hope, gave us the keys to this church four weeks ago, five weeks ago now, uh, last week we were installed as a pastors of Relentless Church, officially. The reason why that is significant is because this is the first time as the installed pastors that I get to preach and I asked the Lord what is it that you want me to say the reason why I shout the way I do and sweat through two shirts per service is because I know that none of this should be I know how hard God had to work hey to YouTube me. what's going on everybody hey YouTube what's going on hi subscribers if you haven't already, please hit that red subscription box and the bell icon next to it. I would greatly it. appreciate it. Hey YouTube, what's going on? So, how you liking the video so far? Well, I'm going to interject here with a few questions that I have. And let's see. Why do people always go to the Word of God? After they commit the offense or the sin instead of prior to it or during it to keep them from actually doing it. Secondly, so the first time he gets to preach in his, you know, relentless church where he's now senior pastor. Because as you heard in the clip, he generally, uh, you know, pastors with Joel Osteen. But um, how come the first time he gets to preach in his church is basically a confessional to his wife about the alleged affairs he was he he was having during um, during the marriage? You're you're gonna see you're gonna hear um, going further in the video that he definitely confesses. All right, so why do people always bring up other people's faults or sins? Basically, John Gray is telling you about Paul, who was once Saul, who sat there and watched um, someone get stoned to death. 
So basically, if God can allow this man to watch somebody get stoned to death and he doesn't do anything about it, God can forgive me for cheating as senior pastor, you know, kind of thing. So, is it John Gray? Okay, the whole thing with the sweat and oh my God, sitting under this light right here, I'm kind of got a little bit on my forehead, <laughs> but um... John, he says here, basically, let me grab these readers, y'all, so we could definitely get into this, okay? So, John, is it possible for John to sweat through two shirts during a service? Absolutely, especially when he knows that he is preaching under false pretense, that he is preaching under lies. That he is preaching under the sin of another woman. Or allegedly, as we going to hear his wife say, she prays for them and then him. So I think there's more than one woman involved here, y'all. Allegedly. Also, it goes on to say, um, he knows that he's living in sin. I mean, he knows that. Our sins will find us out eventually. And, and that leads me to the next thing. Do all preachers know the word of God? Or do they just get up there because the door was opened up for them? Hence through another preacher or somebody they know. Um, do they know everything? Do they know all things? Um, or are they just up there preaching? Because the Bible does say... Being that some people have no wisdom of God, that God, it pleases God that people preach the word of God in foolishness anyway. Because nonetheless, the word of Christ, the word of God is being preached. And I think that's what we have a lot in the black Christian community and church. And besides, Kaya say, trust no Nick, no N-I-G-G-A-H for this purposes and trust no Christians. And I say most Christians are the N-word and most of people who classify as the N-word are Christians. So, you have a whole bunch of nigga Christians lying. I'll just say it like that, okay? Anyway, he says he knows how hard it was for God to get him there to the place where he is. But check out this clip from Sister Circle and you be the judge as to who got him where he is in life. God came to set the captive free. Sent Christ to set the captive free. And sometimes when people get married, it says two fleshes become one, bone of my bone, flesh of my flesh. Sometimes women, sometimes people get... um get with men and want to be their mother instead of their spouse, their wives. Check this clip out and let me know what you think about this. Thank you. My mother somehow was able to break that mold. But of course, when you're close to your mama and you don't know how to do all the things that everybody else is doing, what are you, a sissy? You gay? What are you, a punk? Mm -hmm. So I got bullied and talked about and all of that. <clears throat> but she was my only chance. My mother was my only chance at manhood. My mother was instrumental in, in guiding me to make wise decisions. The wife that I chose is better than the man that I am. I married a woman two sizes too big. I have to grow into Aventer. She's a coat. I still can't fit her. She's bigger than me. And she's had to cover me while I grow up. I got to grow into her. But she's a covering. She's a covering, not a lid. Because if a man marries a lid, she'll stop your dream. But if you marry a covering, she'll push you to your destiny. Now, I'm about to shout and tear this whole thing up. I'm just telling you. Let me tell you something. My, my wife has endured more pain birthing me than both of our children. She has sacrificed these last eight years uncovering the painful areas of my manhood and covering the areas that could have exposed me. She deserves anything I can give her. You understand what I'm saying? Yes. I'm going to live the rest of my life to honor her because she gave me what I couldn't give myself, which is a chance to heal while still seeing the God in me. The Apostle Paul, 1 Corinthians 15, 
verse 9 says, For I am the least of the apostles, who am not worthy to be called an apostle, because I persecuted the church of God. He was complicit in murder. When Stephen was being stoned in the book of Acts, the man who held the coats was a man named Saul. He watched it happen, didn't stop it. Not only did he want it to happen, he watched it happen and, and actually enjoyed it while it was happening. But by the grace of God, I am what I am. Is there anybody else who can say, but by the grace of God, I am what I am? And his grace toward me was not in vain, but I labored more abundantly than they, than they all. Yet not I, but the grace of God which was with me. I want to preach from the subject, Relentless Grace. Aventon, come here, please, Pastor Aventon. Give me a few moments to honor this woman, please. This is your pastor. This is Aventer Gray. This woman has done more work to push the vision of Relentless Church in the last seven months than anything you could ever imagine. Please don't leave if you don't have to, unless you got to go to work, because the service ain't over. 18 hours, maybe more, a day, raising kids activities for both kids, full travel schedule, two churches, a TV show, her thyroid is almost gone, precancerous cells, surgery, all kinds of stuff the devil tried to do, and she was relentless in pushing the vision in me. I bring it up, AJ, you were there, you've seen it. I bring it up because people see this, But what they didn't see is for the last two years, we weren't sure if we would even make it. Just smile with me real quick, because I need them to know. This is what the people saw. But they didn't see the tears at night. They didn't see the times when one of us was sleeping on a couch because the argument. We had to, we had to, we had to keep smiling because even though we were struggling and even though I was failing as a husband, I was already in front of the people and the people can't really receive my brokenness because where do leaders go when they believe? All right, YouTube, we are back. Okay, so you heard that part of the interview, our confessional or whatever you want to call it. And John Gray used scripture to denounce himself as great. Kind of like, um, you know, you heard him say, I am the least of the apostles, meaning all the preachers out there. He's like the least. Uh, there's so many other out there doing worse than me. I don't really have this preaching thing down, you know. But um, it's a it's a cry for sympathy, for people to feel sorry for him. Again, I say when we put people up on a pedestal when they fall short of the glory of God it, it it just does something to somebody's heart like oh my god John Gray the man of God yeah the man of God should have been more into the word of God instead of into some other woman's panties so it says but by the grace of God, I am what I am. Yes, John, but by the grace of God, we are what we are. And a lot of times we say God created us in his image. Is God a cheater? Is God a liar? Is God a fornicator? Is God a whoremonger? Is God a adulterer? Is God all these things? But by the grace of God, I am who I am. I am a child of God, I am a mother of three, I am a grandmother of four, I am a black woman, I am a straight woman, I love men kind of a woman, you know what I'm saying? I um, am not a liar, I'm educated, I have a degree, 
I have a license. I teach people the word of God. I tell people the truth. Um, but by the grace of God, I am who I am. I don't have a proud look. I'm not quick to shed innocent blood. I don't have feet to run um, to, to mischief quickly. I don't have a heart that devise wicked imaginations. I don't bear false witness. I don't um, sow discord amongst the brethren. You understand what I'm saying? And I'm not a cheater. You know, it, 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 yes, but by the grace of God, I am who I am. Who are you? And before you get up before the masses and say you want to be a, speaking on the word of God, get some things in check, like your sexual desire to go out and be with other people. That's the first thing anybody should want to get in check. And like self-control is what it really is. You cannot keep saying the devil made me do it. But as we go along in this interview, you're going to hear this whole blaming the when devil. When people need to start to take responsibility for themselves. So the next thing is, why do people use God's grace as an escape by the grace of God? God says, I give you power to get wealth. One of the ways of being wealthy is when you get married, it says, bone of my bone, flesh of my flesh, a woman... A man shall leave his mother and father, cleave unto his wife, and two flesh shall become one. So take those vows serious. Take those vows. I told you I was married and divorced, and my ex-husband didn't take his vows serious. And just like John Gray had a baby. I, I'm going to say allegedly here too, because we still ain't see the blood test. You know what I'm saying? Or blood work or anything no paternity test or whatever but allegedly he had a baby outside of, of our marriage and i divorced him so but i'm gonna tell you something in an instance like this with avatar gray her husband is senior pastor god does work with restoration and her lifestyle would change dramatically if she leave her husband you understand what i'm saying so won't some women stay because of what they have um, to look forward to like Lamborghinis and things like $200,000 cars when the husband messed up. My husband wasn't that rich and I was pretty much taking care of the whole household. So it was okay for me to leave him because the lifestyle I was living, I built and I'm still living that lifestyle. You understand what I'm saying? So, but you have some women like Aventar, they married these men of God who only set out to make them look bad and, and they have to buy them you know expensive gifts to say i'm sorry and ask for forgiveness so god's grace has nothing to do with this y'all why is his wife doing all these things 18 hours a day y'all 18 hours a day y'all avatar is trying to open up churches this that you heard what he said but was she servicing her husband's needs? Was she taking care of John Gray? You understand what I'm saying, y'all? You got to find balance. When you want to be in the ministry, you want to be married, you want to be a mother, you want to do all these outreach programs, you have to have balance. And some of the things you're going to hear John Gray say are like basically excuses. Excuses. And we're going to get into that. So, when he said that it was, oh, he's going to say something like, this is what the people saw. And when I saw that expression of him, y'all, it was like Magilla Gorilla. Just that look on his face was like, oh my God, look at this gorilla sitting in the front of the store waiting to be sold. And so many Christians have sold their souls to be on top but yet they're not living godly they don't have an ounce of word of god in them and they do everything demonic and evil against their wives their family their kids blaming everything on the devil when james 1 and 14 says every man is drawn away by his own lust into the temptation after temptation the devil has nothing to do with that and again 
people of God always make God look bad when they say the devil make me do it. The first thing you want to do when you become a Christian or a believer in God is find out who the devil is so he don't keep making you do what it is God don't want you to do, okay? And most of these pastors know this from going to seminary school and just being under pastors. They, they know this. They claim they don't, but they do. So, and with his struggles, people can't really suck. They didn't see his struggles. And where do, where do leaders go who have a broken heart? Should not they go to God? Should not they go to the one who says in Psalms 51 and 10, Create in me a pure heart, O Lord, a renewed spirit, so that I don't want to do the things I used to do for Satan and in the kingdom of darkness before I became, by the spirit of adoption, your child? By the spirit of adoption, I became the daughter of God, and prior to doing that, I did devilish things. Like slept with a married man. But I told you I never got pregnant by one. You understand what I'm saying? But then when you come closer to God. And develop a relationship with the most high God. There's certain things you don't want to do. Under the umbrella of God. That you did in the kingdom of darkness. So. Let's journey forward. Thank you. Because. Sheep don't do well with blood, so I had to bleed alone. And what's strange is I traveled the whole world, and the Holy Ghost showed up, and people got saved, and me and my wife just kept smiling, and nobody knew that we were getting ready to get a divorce. Because as long as I kept producing, nobody cared what was happening at home. Because as long as we can use you, we will. And then when you fail, we'll find someone else. Just do me a favor and keep smiling, keep producing, fly all over the world, fight for everybody else's family while your own marriage is falling apart, while your kids are crying for you every night, wondering when daddy's coming home, but you're doing the best you can to provide, and you're really scared to come home because you don't know how to be a husband or a father because you didn't see either one. So you just got to keep smiling until it all falls apart. And I started listening to the wrong voices and let some people get too close. And she found out and she set it off just like a good wife should. Okay, you too. We got a lot in this segment right here. Let's see. Um, let's start with sheep don't do well with blood. Nah, it's mud, y'all. You heard about the sheep and the pig, right? So pigs love to dwell in mud, right? Sheep, they fall in the mud, they fall in the sin a little bit. These are the righteous people of the world, but they bad to get out immediately. They don't like the mud. As far as blood, he says he had to bleed alone. So is he not a sheep himself and the, and the shepherd in the flock of, of the kingdom of heaven? Is he not a son of God? Why does he have to bleed alone when Christians are supposed to unite, edify, exhort, encourage, and comfort one another in the admonition of the Most High God, right? So with all this Christianity around him, him playing church, traveling around the world as he says, you know, saving souls and doing whatever, why didn't he reach out for help is basically what I'm saying. A lot of Christians have that pride still. Oh, it's happening to my household. Oh, I messed up. But instead of reaching out and dealing with it and being honest, they cover it up. They they hide it under the blood of Jesus. And it stays there. And they don't deal with it. And they don't mature and don't grow from it. So he goes on to say he traveled the whole world. Does he have any more babies possibly out there in the world? We're hearing stories and reports of an alleged woman saying she's pregnant, having this child or whatever. Is there more? He said the Holy Ghost showed up and people got saved. This is true. Regardless of what kind of mistake you may make in your life, you can still lead someone to the Most High God. You can still plant the seed. 
and, and, and Christ will water it, nurture it, and God will raise it, grow it. You understand what I'm saying? So I don't fault him for that. Yes, get people saved, delivered the best way you can. My thing is, a lot of times it's under false pretense. You have a lot of these preachers out here who know they're doing wrong. And instead of them stepping down, instead of them reaching out for help, instead of them being real with their congregation, they'll continuously have uh, extramarital relationships. Though some of them will be gay. Some of them will have, um, some will be lesbians. Um, some, you know... That's all in the Bible. If you want to know who's right, who's wrong, I told you there's two kind of people in the world under the umbrella of God. You bear the fruit of the Spirit or you live in the works of the flesh, okay? And a lot of people in Christianity are still living in the works of the flesh. So, nobody know we're getting divorced and why not ask for help? Nobody knew they were getting divorced. Why not ask for help? I mean, you are taking on pastoral shit, people's problems, people's concerns, people's, you know, desire to do better in life and live good. And if you're struggling within your own home, nobody's saying you can't go ahead and get the help that you need and still help other people. Because a lot of people say, well, your house is screwed, your household is screwed up, so how can you help people? I don't necessarily believe in that. But when you take on the responsibility of leading other people, yeah, we are leaders in our own families, in our own homes, in our own districts, you know, like that. But when you take on masses of people around the world and throughout the world, then you have to live by a higher standard or people expect you to live by a higher standard. And if you know you can't live up to that standard, let people know because people will still follow you. People will still, you know, flock to you and, 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 and learn from you as long as you're being real with them. That's what I believe. So, it goes on, as long as he was producing, nobody cared what was happening at home. I believe that as long as he was going out fulfilling his duties at Joe Osteen's church and around the world and all these women he's allegedly dealing with, nobody cared what was going on at home. And home surely don't care sometimes women. And you got to agree with me on this. A man can go out there and cheat on y'all as long as he's still paying the rent long as the kids still wearing fine clothes long as there's food in the refrigerator long as i get your hair done and your nails done and yes you have allowed men to go out and cheat as long as no no as long as nobody cared what was going on at home and sometimes that's the wife who should start caring and who should start saying something immediately when they see the signs of cheating or something going on fishy in the relationship. He admitted that church folks use people, then toss you away. I tried to tell y'all. <laughs> I try to tell y'all church folks that y'all is the most some of the most wickedest people in the world. Yes, you use a John Gray up, you use people up in the system, in the church system of things, and then when you don't need them no more, it's like, oh well, I'm done with him. I he served my purpose. But the same thing goes along at home. Was John using his wife to build up his platform? Was she using John to build up hers? I mean do people use people to get married and to live this kind of lifestyle? So yes, people using people in the church, but there's a beautiful thing Christ says, pray for your enemies, those that despitefully use you, misuse you, and abuse you. Somewhere in Matthew 5, 6, somewhere over there. 5 and 45 and 6, somewhere like that. Chapter 5, verse 45 and 46. So then it goes on. He says, you know, the world wanted him to like keep smiling. And when he's saying people, he's talking about like the Joel Osteens and, and, and the T.D. Jakes and the people he sat under and, and, and learned from. Keep smiling in front of the people, the cameras, while your family falls apart. John, you have choices. You can tell them, look, my family is more important than me going around the world, cheating on my wife, making all these babies allegedly outside of marriage and 
ah, uh, yada, 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 yada. You know what I'm saying? Like, you have choices. You know, God, when you want, the, the, I always tell my family and people, y'all, yeah, I always say the only institute of mar- of, of anything God says to death do us part is marriage. No child, you can have a child and it doesn't say till death do us part. You can graduate college and it doesn't say till death do us part. You can do a lot of things in this world and it doesn't say until death do us part. Only marriage, okay? Because that's like... In, in the world of Christianity, that's like um, God saying, okay, Christ, the church is the bride of Christ. So that's why marriage is so prevalent and so, you know, uh, real in the eyes of God. And the only institution or com- commencement in, the, in this world that has the death till death do us part attached with it. There's some truth to that, y'all. So... Also, the Bible says if you go in, if a man goes into a woman, he automatically becomes her husband. She automatically becomes his wife. So the whole thing of the marriage certificate and all that stuff, that's in another teaching we can do because it is biblical. Okay, so then he goes on to say, while your kids are crying every night saying when daddy coming home, I say when daddy get up out that other other lady coochie when daddy leave them other women alone daddy will be have a little bit more time to be home with the kids the kids would not spend all night every day crying for daddy daddy has to make it up in his mind and purpose it in his heart that he is gonna be there for avatar and for those kids okay Hell, daddy could get online like most of us and preach and go around the world right from the comforts of his own home with his kids ripping and running in the other rooms and his wife cooking dinner and all this other stuff. Let's keep it real. Let's just keep it real, okay, guys? So he said that, you know, something about being scared. He was scared to come home. He didn't know how to be a husband or a father, but we heard in the clip that he said his mother and his wife, his mother, you know, mold them and his wife, you know, birthed them, giving no credit to God who created him in his image. So, and that's another thing I noticed. We want so much from God and we running around here, God, God, God. But in the instance that we need to give God a uh, reverence and glory, we need to give God homage and honor is never there we always give it to somebody else least important especially people who didn't even create us like our mothers and our wives and our husbands and things like that they didn't create us but we give more homage and reverence and glory and respect to them than we do the creator so it goes on to say um, and you, I'm surprised he said this because the way his wife said in Sister Circle that, well, the re- the reference he made to his wife birthing him in Sister Circle, he don't know how to be a husband and he don't know how to be a father. So he needs some more training. He needs to just admit he needs to learn what being a man is really all about. Okay, then he goes on to say she set it off like a good wife. Isn't it typical of a man to start some bullshit between two women and then see his girl get the best of the other girl by talking shit or beating her ass? Yeah, he said she set it off like a good wife. Like good wives are supposed to be out here arguing and hooping and hollering with the other woman over his sorry ass because he couldn't keep his wee-wee in his pants. I'm sorry, y'all. I'm just so disgusted at these Christians in high positions positions again that's that wickedness seated in high positions but um yeah she set it off like a good wife and you know she kind of black and she went up in there like ha 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 you're gonna hear how she responded to the strange woman she accused of sleeping with her husband but anyway setting it off like a good wife some of y'all men y'all live for this shit y'all want to see women fight over y'all y'all want to see women go back to back go go head to head excuse me over y'all so when he said she set it off like a good wife yeah you're gonna hear this woman say 
he slept on the couch she said some things to him and i know she cursed his ass out but she ain't gonna say that in the church but the church is the place where you need to be honest to set yourself free you understand what i'm saying ain't nobody telling you to go to church and curse and all this well she could have said what the hell she said she said to him so we all know that she said what she said whatever it was she said to him right she said some stuff to him y'all any black woman know you cursed him the hell out probably threw his clothes out told him to get out for a couple days whatever you understand what i'm saying depending on how far you want to go with it but um again in church they will play everything down but church is supposed to be the place where you're transparent and, 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 and tear everything up bring everything up release everything let everything go so anyway this all right we're gonna stop right there because yeah she set it off like a good wife y'all and i want y'all to hear exactly how she set it off okay and remember you cannot blame the devil for every damn thing you do it's called self-control and until you learn self-control the devil know he can come around and toss you to and fro to and fro yes to and fro and you want to have a stable foundation in god you don't want to be tossed to and fro every time a new woman come along every time a new man come along every time a new song come along every time a new dance come along every time a new doctrine or teaching come along you're there going to and fro because you have no stability in the word of god so let's carry on with this conversation thank you so much and god bless you and then i prayed for them and him and then the devil loses because what's not going to happen is you tell me that i'm going to lose my purpose because somebody whispered to a 16 year old john the devil is a lie I'm standing with my husband, and you can go on back to the pits of hell where you came from. Yeah, was I upset? Yes. Was I heartbroken? Yes. But you better learn how to get in there for the, what, what's the vows? Better and worse. Okay, so when the worst shows up, you don't run away. When the worst shows up, you pray. Now, I might have said a few words and uh, told him to sleep on the couch and some other things. However... When the word is inside of you and you know what your position is, everything else is false. I know who I am. I am the rib that God took from him. I'm his rest in brokenness. Rib, rest in brokenness. More like resting in bushes. Until he wakes up and understands who he is. You pray, wife, while the devils run away. Amen? I'm not saying to sit there in perpetual foolishness. I'm saying to pray the devils away. If you give up too soon, he wins. But he couldn't have this purpose. He knew what this was. And he was coming for y'all. That's why he came for us. We know better. We know better. I see you, devil, but you don't want it with me. I get in the eyes of the devil. Do you hear me? You can't have this here, devil. I don't care. I just look cute, but the devil don't want it with me. I put scripture on that strange woman. I put scripture on that strange woman. She don't want it with me, and she don't want it with y'all. Amen? You want me to leave my husband because you spoke to the, the 16 year old that couldn't get a date and he listened so I'm supposed to to leave my husband right because you spoke to a place of brokenness that had not yet been submitted back to the father but because I know the tricks of the enemy and I'm learning them every day I can stand here in boldness for everybody that tried to sneak in, thank you, because I got closer to God because of it. I got in that word and I was like, shh, 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 shh. 
Come on here, devil. You don't want it with me. I knew after last weekend, some would try to show up. But I'm standing on the promises of God. Okay? Know who you are, wife. And husband, know who you are. You didn't have a father, but you got a heavenly father. You weak wife for taking care of kids, get in the scripture and find a place of solace and retreat. Don't let the devil whisper to you. Don't let the, le don't let the devil push you out of your purpose. prematurely. He would love to hijack your purpose and he wanted to hijack y'all by coming for this. But it's a no devil. Hashtag it's a no. Okay, guys. Hi. All right. So to wrap things up here, you heard Avatar speak, right? So let's just get into it real quick. You saw how the hell she snatched that damn microphone out his hand. What the hell was up with that aggression? I know. She says she raised him. She talks about this 16-year-old John, right, that we hear her speak of. She just absolutely treated him like he was 16 years old, right? So anyway, she says she's prayed for them and him. So there was other women, allegedly, I'm going to say. But I believe there was other women, all right? And she goes on to say um, she's not losing her purpose as John is her purpose. You know, we get married. This is our assignment. God gives us an assignment. My husband is my assignment. My children are my assignment. They're my purpose. You know, sometimes your purpose is not people, I don't think, but it's a, it's a passion or a promise. But she's saying, like, John is her purpose. Like, God gave me this man, and I got to do what I have to do to raise him right. You know what I'm saying? So, um, the devil is a liar. We know that according to John 8 and 44. It talks about how the, there's no truth in him, and he's a liar. Is that John Gray? Is that the father of her children? Is that her husband, Miss Aventar? That that would be a question to her. Um, and she told that strange woman to go back to the pits of hell where that strange woman found her husband, right? How dare she? This is what I mean with people of church. Now, even though this woman cheated with your husband and, and you yelling and screaming, you put scripture on this woman... Well, we know the Bible is filled with black magic and with witchcraft and with a whole lot of other stuff. I wonder what scriptures you put on that woman. And if you're telling the devil to go back to the pits of hell, then uh, a legend that it's this woman that, you know, tried to take your purpose from you. Um, didn't, wouldn't she have found your husband there in the pits of hell where she came from? So, what about the vows? What do the vows mean? This woman clearly don't know the vows and don't know the marriage vows. You know, she's so caught up in trying to show people how she cursed the devil out and told these women off. But that's when people, that's what they say when people get married. When people get married, it, it is not the ceremony. That's, that, that, you know, it marriage is so much more than going to the church and 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 you know going to the chapel it's so much more than that y'all and to think that people who are in god when god says in the book of genesis what a man should do a man shall leave his mother leave his father cleave unto his wife and the two flesh shall become one so she goes on to say until he wakes up and realize who she is she has to step up and do what a good wife is supposed to do which is keep raising this man romans 8 11 and 8 romans 11 and 8 says according as it is written 
God put a spirit of slumber on his people. People like John Gray. People like the pastors of the world. People who keep making all these mistakes out here. Calling themselves godly. Because they're not woke. His wife says until he wakes up. He's spiritually asleep. He don't know who he is. He's struggling with being a husband, being a father, being a pastor. You know, he's struggling. And when she said this, my heart got excited because people, she said, until he wakes up, John Gray is asleep according to his wife, Avatar. And I tell you, the Bible told women to shut up and be quiet. It, 1 Corinthians 14 somewhere down around the 35th 6th 33rd verse or something like that and women should not preach women hold the light of the world and 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 i think men have put it on women because men don't want to bow down to women you know it says men are the head women are this i think it goes the other way sometimes i think women are the head and men just don't want to submit to us that's why the European man went through here and made everything man, 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 man. And women have to be the neck or underneath the man. And and I don't think it's like that with God. I think there's a lot of light in women who hold the truth. But because of the stipulation, women shouldn't preach or women shouldn't speak or women should honor their husbands. I mean, let's face it. Probably if she was out there preaching and going around the world, this may not have never happened in their relationship. You never know. She does seem like the stronger one in knowing who she is in the Most High God. But it's funny. She's going to say something and she says something to the fact that, um, uh, how does she say that? How does she say that? It'll come to me and I'll put it in the comments below. Let's move on. Now she projects her problems on the crowd. She said the devil came for us because he was trying to come from you. People always trying to include people in their bull. It's probably people in that audience that never cheated before, never had a problem like her and her husband is going through. You understand what I'm saying? Oh, but if if he's attacking us and we're admitting it publicly, he's coming at the at the leaders of the church. He's coming at us. If he could destroy us, then he can destroy you. He can destroy our church and we're going to show you how tough and how to fight this and we're going to be honest when they should have just been honest and fighting like this from day one because a lot of people become Christians and think oh I got saved and that's all to it once you turn your life over to God you have a natural enemy called the devil the jinn satan evil wickedness demonic demons whatever you want to call it it is your natural born enemy all right so then she goes on to say she put scripture on that strange woman honey like i told you whatever scripture she put on that woman she cat she want that woman to go back to the pits of hell she should put the same scriptures on her husband should have been praying for her husband all along ladies i read a book a long time ago and you have to pray over your husband's infidelity, his finances. And even though we do it, the men still may go out and make mistakes and cheat or do whatever. But you have to get ahead of it. If you want to see your marriage succeed, you have to start today. Pray over everything. Everything. His clothes, his shoes. His wallet, his money, his job, his finances. When I say everything, ladies, it's the certain covering women have over their husbands. Was I doing it with mine? No, because when you think the man, like John Gray, is the pastor of the church. My husband was just going to church with us every Sunday, making it appear that he was godly. But when you have somebody going to church with you, you don't think this man is going to go out and do that. But these are the men that are going to go out and do that. The ones who think they have the most relationship with God. And God is going to forgive me by his grace. And there's relentless grace, as you heard John Gray say before. And I can make all the mistakes I make because God is a forgiving God. 70 times 7. That's only 490. After the 491st, is God judging you then? 
Is God making you pay for your sins then? So anyway, it goes on to say, he wasn't submitted back to God. I thought when you become saved, you're submitted back to God. You have repented and you want to live righteous. You want to do what God asks and requires of you righteously. Again, a lot of Christians, they say they are righteous. They say they are godly. They say they are this and that. But yet still come short of the glory. Still fall short of the glory of the Lord. And never line up with the word of God exactly. Then we got over here a couple more things guys. Um, ever tried to sneak in. Oh. She, the women, she said all of them tried to sneak in, but she had to get a little closer to God. She said while all of them was trying to sneak in, this is the whole thing. Don't wait till nobody try to sneak in. Get close with God now. Psalms 55 will tell you about a relationship in a marriage gone wrong how you took sweet counsel together and went into the house of the lord and it talks about how people words are smoother than butter but war is in their hearts it tells you from the old to the young it talks about marriage in a real strange way but it worked for me when i was going through my whole debacle with my ex-husband psalms 55 so over here it goes on to say John didn't have a father and generally John said it in that sister circle interview generally when men don't have a father they make all the excuses in the world when they grow up and fall short as a father and a husband guys as his wife was saying once you become a child of God by the spirit of adoption God becomes your heavenly father and see, we put so much into man and into worldly people that we forget God is our Heavenly Father. And also the Bible says, have no spiritual father in the earth, no spiritual mothers. You have one. I know a lot of Christians go around spiritual mom this, spiritual dad this. You have one spiritual father and it's the creator. And see, we like to take his responsibility and give it to everybody else. And then when Avatar or his mother can't birth him and, ra and raise him in into the man that he should be with discipline and self-control, then it's a blame game. We have to stop blaming one another. You understand, people? So with that being said, thank you so much. God bless you. If you haven't already, hit that thumbs up. Uh, hit the red box to subscribe the subscription box and the bell icon next to it share this video like this video comment on this video and, and and stay tuned for the next one god bless you and shalom i need somebody to make a sound in here i need some people to make a sound in here whom the sun sets free is free indeed. And the devil you expose has no more power. Eric Jackson, sir, you posted something and then you limited your comment. So my husband can't, the other cannot. Now what's amazing about that is that's a little bit cowardly. But what you will not do, and everybody who knows me knows me by now, is the one thing I will not do is come from my husband. If it's lies, we have to talk about it. But if it's lies, we're not doing that. I don't know if you're married. I think I hear that you cater to single people, and that's cool. Um, and the other part is that I heard you actually just got married. Thank you don't want your followers to know on that. So for somebody to take a moment, that's actually caused to heal, called to heal marriages and revert it the way young sir did over there. It's a no on so many levels that. When, when we can't say that we address too much or whatever, we can do what we want because it's our, it's our social. If you don't like it, you can gladly turn it off. So for those being me, as can had I see Pastor John Gray and his lovely wife, IG Lodge, had about me, yes, I have, and I heard all the comments. And which I wasn't really disappointed only because, like,
like what could have been a potentially great ongoing dialogue, it got turned into something personal. Despite me saying several times and even beginning my message yesterday, which what am I about to say in about him personally? And with that, I'm still not about to take it down, clap back, or throw any insults back. Because what somebody has in their heart about me ain't none of my business or burden. But what's on my heart is a desire to address problematic mentalities that create toxic relationships that hurt people. And y'all have been trusting me to speak on these things regardless of who likes it, so I will. Now, I'm posting this here because I'm hoping, despite some people's thirst for drama, that we can be an example of how it should go when two messengers have contrarian perspectives and control contribute those perspectives to the conversation we still need, which is that women should not be obligated to be rehabilitation centers for broken men, period. Now, I'm not sure if he's seen my DM in which I extended this out of bash, or if he's going to see this video like he saw yesterday. So either way it go, I wish this brother nothing but success. And y'all never feel like you have to choose between me and anybody else. You choose the truth and stand on that unapologetically, because you know I will. <laughs> well, alrighty then. You know I will because my spiritual ears stay ringing. <laughs> to the bullshit that goes on in Christianity and in the people that say they are godly but yet still fall short of the glory of the Lord making excuses to do what the hell they want to do in church leading the church as overseers pastors apostles prophets prophetess of the church let me know what your thoughts are down below thank you